What is going on YouTube? This is Jim back with another video and today I want to give you guys my review on Metal Gear Survive. Now, you're probably asking yourself, Jim, E3 is two weeks away and you're talking about Metal Gear Survive? Well, yeah, I am. And it's really largely in part to Game Pass because you know what? Game Pass has done a really good job of taking those mid-tier games and pulling them to the forefront in that subscription-based service much, much more rapidly than PlayStation Plus or Xbox Games with Gold has done. So thanks, Game Pass. I finally got to play this game, and I got to say, it's actually pretty good. But before I get into the specifics, if you guys like this kind of content, please consider commenting, rating, and subscribing. It helps my channel out immensely. Now with that, let's talk about Metal Gear Survive. Now, I think the reason why it was so critically panned was because of the whole Hideo Kojima thing, the way that he left Konami in a very, very bad state. He lost rights to his Fox engine. He lost rights to all of his characters, Solid Snake, all those you know ancillary characters, that whole universe he set up. And Konami quickly turned around and basically dumped out a game, a major, major asset flip from uh, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, the assets pretty much reused almost entirely with a very bizarre spin on this survival mechanic. And I think a lot of people saw the Metal Gear portion of that game title and said, well, this isn't Metal Gear, and they dumped on it. But I challenge you to look at it not from the Metal Gear standpoint, but look at it from the survive standpoint. When you compare it to other survival-based games, Daisy, The Forest, Ark, Don't Starve, you look at games that have a survival mechanic, and I would say that Survive definitely ranks up there one of the best compared to those other games in terms of survival. Yes, it does reuse the old Fox engine. Yes, it looks exactly like Metal Gear 5, but the good thing is, is it plays like Metal Gear 5. And you're gonna have that amazing 60 frames per second at that higher resolution with really crisp, pretty graphics. If you liked Metal Gear, you will like this game solely based on the controls because they really largely are the same. Now, the survival aspect is where this game obviously differentiates and you go off in a very bizarre what if story where after the oil rig explodes and they're attacked by XOF, uh, when Miller and Snake fly away in the helicopter that begins the um, Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain storyline, this goes off in a random what-if dimension, a pseudo-reality, where a giant wormhole opens and sucks a bunch of people into this alternate dimension called Dite. Now, you are a survivor of this. You lost your arm during this. Your, actually, your arm went through the portal. The portal closed and your arm uh, was lost. You fall to the ground. Presumably, they're dead or very injured, but due to whatever's going on in Dite in this alternate alien dimension, your arm actually regrows which is a little bizarre, but it does make sense later on. I don't want to give away the story. Um, and you are sent, after you are awoken, to Dite to find the Charon Corps. So Charon, obviously the boat keeper of the, you know, the mythology, the, the, the keeper of the dead, who rides the boat, or drives the boat over. And um, uh, the Charon Corps was this group of soldiers that were sent over to investigate what's going on in Dite, because it turns out that in this alternate dimension, this portal has opened and they're basically pumping these dead people through. Uh, they were first discovered in Vietnam and it was, you know, there's a lot of story about how that all was covered up, but basically we're gonna go on the attack now. We're gonna go to their home world and eradicate them. And you are sent over to, with two mission objectives. Number one, uh, recover Charon Core. And number two, find a way home because your trip was a one-way trip. So it's got that very bizarre Hideo Kojima-like writing, definitely not on the scale of the character development. You're not gonna have a lot of cutscenes like you did in Metal Gear Solid 4. You're not gonna have a lot of over-the-top comms like you did in Metal Gear 5. You're gonna get um, these little mini cutscenes. They're very, very quick information, very mission-based. Hey, go do this, uh, and off you go. Um, but it's bizarre, and the writing is off the wall. So I feel like even though Kojima isn't there, his presence kind of is there and you can kind of sense that. And maybe that's why the critics disliked it so much because they looked at it and said, geez, you know, this is really trying to be like a next Metal Gear and it's just not working out. But again, I challenge you to look at the word survive in the title, not the Metal Gear portion of this. And I think that you'll find that it's actually a really fun survival based game. So as with all survival based games, you basically start off with nothing. You get a base camp, which is your hub, which is basically where you're going to build up your small empires. You go around and begin to gather materials and go on missions to recover crates and um, intelligence and stuff to bring back to your base, different recipes, 
you're going to go hunt animals, cook them back at your base, filter water back at your base, craft new armor and weapons, etc., all at your base. And it takes a lot of that building elements from Metal Gear Solid 5 and brings that over. So there's this whole base management system. Eventually you will uncover other survivors. You could put them to work for you. You can have them do things like pick potatoes or tend water or defend your base. There's a lot of things that these survivors can help you do. And it's totally optional how many you want to get or not. The story's going to drive you to get a few because you need a few to kind of get things going. But then it's up to you. If you want to have fun with the base building part of it, you absolutely can. But if you don't and you just want to spend all of your hard-earned resources on better guns and bullets and better armor, you could do that too. So I like that. The survival element comes in the fact that you're constantly going hungry and constantly going thirsty. And you have to go around and figure out how to sustain life by killing animals or scavenging um, these different pockets of reality. Because in this bizarre world, um, some of the world is covered in this evil substance called the dust, which requires you to put an oxygen mask on and you have to kind of explore through there. Um, your oxygen mask does run out over time. Your, your, your uh, visibility is greatly reduced. Your stamina is greatly reduced. It's a very difficult place to navigate, but the game forces you to go through it time and time again to go on these scavenging missions. And every so often you'll, you'll enter a pocket of normal reality where things are okay and safe and it's normal. You can take the gas mask off and just be normal, but you're going to have to go through these, um, this, this dusk wall, you know, this dark, this uh, dust, I said dusk, dust <laughs> wall quite a bit. And as you begin to slowly explore the world, you'll find teleporters that allow you to fast travel and you'll find all these old military bases that Sharon Core, uh, I'm sorry, Karen Core had set up. Um, you're also going to find just weird pockets of rea reality that open up where things just pop out. Um, an old ambulance or an old building or something will just pop up out of nowhere. And you can go explore that to find resources as well to stay alive. Uh, ultimately, you will get to a point of all, just like most of these survival games, where you're pretty much self-sufficient. You'll be able to grow food and manage water at your base. So initially, it's a much more culture shock when you realize you can't run very far, you can't hit very fast, you're constantly getting tired, you're constantly hungry, you're constantly thirsty. But if you stick with it for a couple hours after you get through the tutorial missions, you will start to get your footing and you will be able to explore the game. And once you go off on your own, I think that's where the game really starts to pick up. And maybe these reviewers played the first couple hours and felt that it was kind of like, oh, here we go. This is just another lame survival game where they're punishing you almost almost to the levels of those Dark Souls were like, you can't run for more than like five or 10 seconds before your guy just basically collapses on the ground heaving. And, you know, you can't get hit but once or twice and you die and there's enemies everywhere and blah, blah, blah. And you're absolutely right. Those are all fair criticisms of early on. But I think as you stick with the game and you start to build up your empire and you start to get better weapons and you start to get a little bit smarter and figure out how to use the stealth elements to your advantage, um, you can navigate this world very, very easily. And you'll basically find that you want to go somewhere farther and farther on the map. And you'll basically prepare for it. And you'll go around and hunt basic animals to get food and get your water and craft up all your durability and get all your gear back to 100%. Take your best gun, take your Molotovs, take whatever you feel is going to make you the best for success. And then you're going to decide to make the run for it. And you're going to run out to this other outpost, secure it, and then now you have a waypoint between there and your base. And each outpost gets farther and farther and farther away from your base with harder and more varieties of enemies and more difficult environmental obstacles to overcome. And that's really the structure of the game. Um, and I love it for that. It actually works out really, really well. Uh, there's nothing more satisfying, I think, than working your way through a very difficult part of the map to open up and now it's normal again. There's a bunch of animals you can hunt and collect them and bring them back to your base and now you have more food and it's like, yes, I'm set. But you're always gonna be on edge and you're always gonna have to be looking for that next thing to continue going. Um, once you loot a part of a town or a village or bodies or whatever, they're gone forever. So um, you could ultimately basically screw yourself in a death loop, so to speak, if you're not very careful about getting through uh, the um, getting through the early parts of the game in somewhat of an efficient manner. And I, there's always that risk reward of staying around and trying to stockpile on stuff to get better weapons and just going with what you got. It's like, well, I got a very broken, lame, level one, rusty machete, but you know what? It is what it is and we're just going to make it work. Uh, alternatively, you could spend more time, find some really cool gun 
blueprints, find like a pump shotgun with, you know, crafting ammo and building that up. But it's going to cost you a lot of food and water as you're slowly building up your resources to do this. And you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And, you know, that's the decision you're going to have to make on your own. And I like that it kind of paces itself. Now, the game does offer a lot of daily challenges and weekly challenges to allow you to build up things faster. There's a login bonus. So there are a lot of ways to continue the game even without advancing through the main story if you feel like you're being too rushed. They also offer this cooperative side mission where basically it puts everything on hold and it puts you in this alternate dimension with up to four players where you go off and do special missions, defend an outpost, do your, you know, uh, find so many materials or whatever. And those are a lot of fun because if you successfully complete those, you can bring all those resources that you earn with you back to your main base. So it's a great way to supplement your income. Additionally, on those multiplayer missions on top of the standard mission you have to complete there's usually three or four sub missions that are scattered kind of farther away and there's a risk reward there of like hey you know do you think two of you guys could defend the base while we run off and go try to do this really really hard thing and we're going to get a great reward we're all going to get you know legendary guns or we're all going to get you know ten thousand materials or whatever what do you think and it's fun to have those kind of discussions with other people. And there's still a very active community on Discord. There's still a very active community on subreddit. I've met some great people as I've started to play through this game and I'm having a blast with it. So I think that this is one of those rare instances where I think the press got it wrong. Um, and although the Metacritic score is low, I think when you focus on everything that I said, if you like survival games, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with this one. I know that I was. and. Um, I'm glad I got it on Game Pass and got the opportunity to play it in a sense. I didn't give my money to Konami. So if you're one of those, you know, I hate Konami and I can't believe they did this to Kojima and I'll never buy another product for them. I totally understand that. But you know what? I think you're doing yourself a big disservice if you like survival games because I think Metal Gear does a really good job of taking some of those elements from other games and bringing them over into the Metal Gear world with that Metal Gear Fox Engine level of polish in a way that I think is original and unique. And I can't say it's the greatest survival game ever made. There's definitely some nuances, particularly with, with combat. Um, uh, from time to time, you know, you can, you can uh, basically construct anywhere. So you'd be running through a field and you might find a hard level enemy and you could just er basically erect a chain link fence and stand on the other side of it and just stab through the holes with your spear to kill an enemy and it's like, well, that's kind of dumb. And you know what? You're right, it is. Um, but what survival game doesn't have some level of cheese to it where you're, you know, finding infinite ways to farm materials or, or harvest things? I mean, my wife and I did that. I did a video not too long ago on Fallout 76 of our basically infinite supply camp where food and water are a thing of the past for us now because we've spent some time building up your structure. And, and you can have somewhat levels of, of success with Metal Gear Survive, but then you get that really nice gameplay, that 60 frame a second tactical experience where you can stealth around and backstab enemies and kill them in one shot. And you can distract enemies and run behind them. And it's got that kind of cover-based combat system to it, which it works and you add that with the survival and then i think you got a pretty good case for not a bad game so hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you found it useful i know it's way uh past due but you know what it's one of those games that i like i'm a huge fan of the survival genre and it's got that base building element which i think if you've played games like minecraft or satisfactory you will appreciate when you get to kind of see your base layout from nothing and work your way up and you know really expand your empire so to speak to where you're really kind of made in the shade out there and it's really a lot of fun so if you have game pass i, I highly recommend you check it out and even if you don't um go back and look at it again uh check check out some of the later videos that people have made on it check out some of the content that people have been putting together on it and i think you'll see that you know it's not as bad as people think so hope you guys found this video informative thank you so much for watching and until next time i will see you guys on the other side